Applying filters to the data is one of the most common things people do with their data in Excel. Now, obviously you can do that using a shortcut, but guess what? You can also do that using a filter function in Excel. Now in this video, I obviously want to talk about the filter function, but not only that, I also want to talk about some amazing hacks that is going to drastically advance your filter function forward. No further ado, let's apply some filters together. All right, let's just start with the filter function itself. If you take a look at the data that I have right here, it's been converted into a table and the table is called data. And on this table, I'd like to use a formula called filter to apply a bunch of filters. How do I do that? I'm gonna to start to write the filter equals to filter. And then it talks about, hey, which is the data that you'd like to apply the filters in? I'm gonna say that the data is called the data, right? And then it says, hey, do you have any filter conditions that you'd like to supply? So yes, maybe in the customer column, I'm trying to take a look at MNTL as a customer. So I'm just gonna say, hey, in the data table, there is a column called customer, square brackets customer, and the name of the value that I'm trying to apply the filters as is MNTL. Close the bracket, press enter, and wherever it matches the value of MNTL, those are the records it's going to keep and remove the rest, and you're going to get the filter data of MNTL. Now, obviously, once you apply the filter into your own Excel file, the results might differ just a bit. What is gonna happen is that any formatting that happens to be there in the data, which is like, let's say for example, date formatting is going to be removed and you might take a look at the numbers right here. So you have to reformat that into dates. The second thing is that I have already copied the headers right here. You may not get the headers by default. And one of the ways to do that is just to copy the headers right here. A little spin off of the filter function could be that let's just say that you do not really want to apply filters to one column. You want to apply filters to multiple columns. So let's just say I want to apply filters to customer MNTL and get the data or get the records where the sales value is more than 14,000. So there are two filter conditions that I'd like to keep. How do I do that? So I'm just gonna go back to the filter function. I'm gonna take the first condition and put that into its individual brackets. Then I'm gonna write the second condition and between that I'm gonna write the multiplication sign and start to create a bracket and then I'm gonna say that I have the table called data which is where I have a column called sales and in that column I'm trying to get the value which is greater than or equal to 14,000. Close the bracket and close the bracket of the filter function and then finally press enter and what you're going to get is the filter data only for those records which are MNTL and the sales values are more than 14,000. As another spin-off, sometimes you do not really want to apply an AND condition between the filter. You might want to apply an OR condition between the filter. So something like this. I want to get the data of MNTL. That's condition number one. Or another condition could be true where the sales values are more than 14,000. So either of the two conditions true, I want to get the data. So the only thing that changes in the formula is that if you're trying to apply the AND condition, to apply the AND conditions between multiple conditions, you have to supply a multiplication sign to make it as an OR condition, change that to a plus sign and you're kind of good to go. Obviously that will return larger data set because there are multiple MNTLs and multiple values which are more than 14,000 and that's the result that you get. Let's just talk about a few hacks with the filter function. The first hack that I'd like to talk about is that how do you apply a list of values as a filter in one column? So here I have the same data, which is where I have the sales rep and there are multiple sales rep in here and I'd like to apply a filter for either of the two sales rep mentioned in this particular list. That means get the data for Varsha and get the data for James. So now to be able to do such a thing, one way is that you can keep on writing the condition one after the other in the filter function. So filter function uh, sales rep equals to James. I can hard code that sales rep equals to Varsha, hard code that, but then I would not be at the liberty to then make it dynamic. So the filter function, the way it works is that for every single row that you would like to keep in as a filter, you should generate a true or a one output for that. Every row that you wanna remove as a filter, you would like to generate a zero for that. So take a look. So essentially, if I were to write something like this, if I say something like go to the data and in the data, go to the sales rep column, and the sales rep should be equal to let's say Varsha. And I close the bracket and I press enter. You can see that I have been able to get a bunch of trues and falses and wherever the sales rep was equals to Varsha, I have been able to get a true. At the moment, the only trouble is that I have only one single sales rep, but I wanna have either of the two sales rep right here. Well, guess what? I can use a simple counter function. Remember the output that I'm trying to get for every single row, if I'm trying to make the filter function work, is that true 
or is that a false? Every true is going to be kept, every false is going to be removed. So I can just go ahead and refine my formula something like this. I'm going to say something like count if. Here is my range, lock that, and here is that column in which I'd like to check. So close that, and I'm just going to maybe close the bracket and press enter. As soon as I maybe press enter, you're going to get a count that did it return you any value or not. And if it returned you any value, it's just going to say that the count was one, otherwise the count was zero. One and zero also works, true and false also works. Now this particular condition is going to go inside of my filter function, so control A, control C on that. I'm gonna get rid of that and start to write my filter function. So I'm gonna say equals to filter, filter the data, and what is my condition? Here is my condition, close the bracket, press enter, and what I get is nothing but the data, only for Varsha and for James. And this is dynamic, by the way. So if you perhaps change this to, let's say, Veronica, you're gonna get the records for Veronica, and that's pretty amazing. Trick number two. Not all the times you would want to get all the columns that you have as a data source. So at the moment I have six columns here and the filter is also pushing out the six columns of the data, but I do not really want to have all the columns of the data. I only want to have a few columns of the data. Perhaps I just want to have the date, the sales rep and the sales column of the data. How do I do that? I'm going to wrap my filter function around the choose columns function and I'm going to say that, hey, please choose column number one choose column number two and choose column number four as an output of the filter function. So I'm just going to go right here and say something like choose columns. And I'm going to say this is the data from which you have to choose the columns. Which columns are those? Those are, let's say, um, column number one, column number two and column number four close the bracket, press enter, and you're only going to get those columns. Obviously, you'll have to work out the headers once again, but this is still a pretty good output. The next hack that I would like to speak about is how do you do a wildcard type of a search in the filter function? So let's just say I want to pull up the records of all the customers where the name of the customer has the letter B in it. That's the kind of search that I would like to do. Well, what you can do is start with writing the condition that gives you a true and false for every single row. If you're able to get a true, that should work in the filter function. So I'm gonna to start to do a very simple search. So I'm trying to find this particular character and I'm trying to find it in the data. And in the data, the column name is the customer. I'm gonna close the bracket, close the bracket and press enter. Now you can see that wherever the letter B was found in the name of the customer, it's going to give you a particular value, which is one or zero, whatever that is. Now the thing is that I don't really wanna have the number here. I wanna have ones and zeros and I do not really want to have the value error as well. So what I can do is I can just wrap this search function is in an is number function just to take a look that is the output of this formula a number or not. If it's not a number, even if it's an error, it is going to give me a false. I'm going to close the bracket and press enter and that actually gives me the true and false output that I really want for the filter function to work. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in the filter condition. So filter my data and what is my condition? Here is my condition and I can just close the bracket and press enter. And those are all the customers that have the letter B in that. Now let's just search for, let's say ABC. Now there is no customer that has ABC in the name. Now obviously it returns a calc error. Now what you can also do in the filter function as the last part of the function, if the value is empty, you can declare anything else as an output. So I can say something like not found and press enter and I'm kind of good to go. All right, that was the filter function itself and a few hacks around the filter function. Please let me know in case you are going to be using this function and in what ways can the hacks be helpful in the kind of work that you do. Leave a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX, Power Query and Excel training courses in case you're starting out your journey with any of these applications and you'd like to master the fundamentals first. Then you'd like to move on to solving more harder or difficult problems, even of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye now.